Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's meeting of the Committee of Adjustment. This is a meeting to consider applications for minor variance and consents that is held under the authority of the Planning Act of Ontario. Please keep in mind the intent of this process is to review applications that are before us, listen to all the evidence, and then make a decision. This process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between the town, individuals, or any other organizations. If the request for a deferral is made this evening and the committee grants such a request, after consultation with our secretary treasurer, we'll, I'll set a new hearing date. No further notice will be provided unless there are changes to the application. In order to conduct an effective and efficient hearing, we've adopted the following process that uh, we will follow tonight. The owner or authorized agent will be given the opportunity, if so desired, to briefly explain to us the basis of the application and answer any questions that may arise out of the hearing process. A maximum of five minutes will be provided for, for this presentation. You need to state your full name and address for the record. Any material submitted to the committee for viewing will remain the property of this committee, and any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of this committee. All persons attending the hearing who wish to support or oppose an application must also state their full name and address for the record. A maximum of five minutes will be provided to make this presentation. All remarks and questions are to be directed to the chair of this committee, and any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of this committee. If there are several speakers that uh, share the same view, uh, we ask that you please select a spokesperson to communicate those uh, uh, combined group opinion to us. We want to hear all the views and collect all the evidence, however, covering the same points, does not necessarily assist us. The owner or agent will then be provided with a further five minutes to respond to comments made by any interested parties and answer any questions from uh, any of the members of the committee here tonight. If the owner or agent has any concerns found in the staff report and particularly with any of the proposed conditions, this will be your opportunity to uh, advise us. The matter will then be taken to the committee for a decision and that will mark uh, the end of all discussion from the floor. Once our committee makes an oral decision, any person desiring a copy must file with the Secretary Treasurer at this meeting a written request for notice of the decision. We've provided a green sheet in the back table in the room that we ask that you fill out and leave with us before you uh, leave the hearing tonight. Please note that you must make a written request in order to be included on in all the list that is used by the interim municipal board for the giving of any subsequent notice of any appeal. Written notice of our decision will be mailed not later than 10 days for minor variance and 15 days for consent to the applicant, the owner, and or agent, and any other person who has filed a written request for such notice. If you do not agree with the committee's decision tonight, you may appeal this to the Interim Municipal Board. The last day to appeal the decision to the Interim Municipal Board will be noted on, its, on the decision itself. If no appeal is received within the prescribed time frame, the decision of this committee becomes final and binding. The Secretary Treasurer will then notify the applicant through subsequent written correspondence. People attending this meeting uh, tonight are to be courteous to respectful members of the committee, town staff, and other people in attendance. And just as a note, tonight's meeting will be live streamed and available for future view, uh, viewing on the town's live stream page at uh, oakville.ca backslash live. We ask that cellular phones and pagers be switched off during the meeting as they tend to interfere with our audio system here. Thank you. So we have one regret this evening. Uh, Ms. Uh, Sherry McCall cannot be with us. Uh, members, is there any declaration of any pecuniary interest on matters that are before us tonight? Seeing none, everyone is not in any affirmative. They have no conflict or no pecuniary interest. Is there anyone here this evening that has a request to either defer or withdraw an application? Anyone wishing to defer or withdraw? Ms. McHale, you have an application? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you to the committee, as per comments provided uh, with respect to application CAVA 210-2016 at 108 John Street, Staff would request a deferral of this application on the basis that there is an error in the notice and it would allow staff to provide proper comment on a revised notice. Is it staff requesting a deferral request? This is correct, yes. So what happens with the uh, deferral fee on that one? Is it waived? Yeah, the, through you, Mr. Chairman, there will be no deferral fee on the applicant's uh, part. Uh, this will be something that uh, the town will be taken care of in, in accordance with the procedural bylaw. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone here this evening that has an interest in application CAVA 210-2016 at 108 John Street? Anyone here have an interest on 108 John Street? 
uh, well, no, you, you're here. Might as well register your name uh, just quickly um, and just tell me you concur or you don't. But you got to come up to register because we have this all this thing to record it. Julie Thompson. Okay, Ms. Thompson, good evening. And Kate and, McManus. Uh, Sorry? Kate McManus. I'm the other owner. Okay, thank you. And um, I guess you concur with the request to get the notice corrected? Yep, yes. Okay, so the earliest uh, that this matter could come forward is January 31st? Uh, no. I thought it was the sure. 17th of January. So, Mr. Chair, uh, it's already been, uh, because we, we knew before that it's going uh, to be deferred, so it's already been scheduled for January 17th. Okay, so January 17th, and uh, there will be need for a new notice, so they can reflect all the variances that are necessary. And we'll ask you to arrange to our Secretary Treasurer the, uh, uh, the new notice that needs to be posted. Okay, so members, you all concur? Okay, all those in support. So the matter will be deferred to our October, uh, January 17th, 2017 meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else uh, here this evening wishing to defer? or withdraw an application. Okay, so we'll start with the first application on our agenda and that's CABA 207-2016 at 16 Brookfield Road. The owner agent, please come forward. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and committee members. My name is David Brown. I'm planning associate at David Small Designs. We're the authorized agents for the owners of the property at 16 Brookfield Road. The there are a number of neighbors in attendance this evening, Mr. Chairman, so I anticipate that a presentation is in order. Okay, well, let's, uh, you're doing all my homework, which is good. Can I just see a show of hands, those that have an interest in application CAVA 207-2016? Okay, so you're correct. You have five minutes, and we'll start the clock. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is the proposal to develop a new two-story single attached dwelling on the subject property. The property has been deemed by the zoning section as being a through lot, meaning that it has frontage on Brookfield Road here at the front and Lakewood Drive at the rear of the property. Mr. Brown, just for a sec, can anyone see the overhead or do we need to dim the lights? Okay, here we go. Is that better? Okay. They zoom out just a little bit, Mr. Oh, Chairman. Yes, can Maybe you I'll please zoom out? Do you want me to do that or? I'm not quite sure who has control of the I'm not ultimate. Sure uh, driving either. Yes, okay. There we go. There you go. So. Thank you. Down at the bottom of the plan is Lakewood Drive down can here. Can you try to speak to the bike so we can all hear you? Sorry, Mr. Chairman. The, at the bottom of the plan, you'll see Lakewood Drive down, down here. And the frontage of the property that we're talking about on Lakewood Drive is up in this area. There's quite a wide boulevard between the edge of the road and the rear property line. I note that because it will become relevant in a few moments. Mr. Chairman, if this property were a lot fronting on Brookfield, the, av the grade calculation for measuring the height would be taken from the midpoint on the front property line here on Brookfield Drive. That translates, that translates to a dimension we see down here, the established grade of 83.25. The height of the dwelling measured to the highest ridge in this area gives us a height of 9 meters, which complies with the zoning bylaw. When we're dealing with a through lot, the elevation is the average of the lot front, or the grade here at the front on Brookfield and the grade here at the midpoint on Lakewood. When we average those two numbers, the result is that that grade now is lowered by approximately 1.49 meters. So I'm just going to show these two side by side. You can see it drops down. But more importantly, Mr. Chairman, the house doesn't change its perspective relative to the street. The issue arises primarily because the difference in grade across this property is just under three meters. From this midpoint here at the front on Brookfield, just a little more, to the midpoint here on Lakewood, there's a difference of three meters. When we average that out between the two properties, it effectively lowers that average grade by 1.49 meters. The result of that is that we find ourselves 1.49, I believe is the number, Mr. Chairman. I hear a bird whispering in my ear, Mr. Chairman. The application, as was originally circulated, showed 10.59. Um, through revisions and confirmation of some numbers and working with the planner here at the town, we've confirmed that the uh, height will be 10.49 meters. And as such, I would ask that the application be amended to reflect that number. 
Right. Riz, I'm assuming Correct. you're okay with that uh, change. Okay, let's uh, ensure that we reflect that. Absolutely. Thank you. Just, um, it's just as a result of the way in which we had done some calculations and um, Ms. Mihalovic was very diligent and she found that discrepancy and we've gone through and corrected that to make it all right. I did forward some correspondence to the Secretary Treasurer to confirm that, so we do have that in writing at 10.49 metres. The difference the house has not changed as it relates. The impact of this and the streetscape on fronting onto Brookfield is that the house, as I said, would comply if we were fronting onto Brookfield as part of that streetscape. It's the introduction of the through lot component that lowers that established grade number and creates the scenario of the impact of this height. We did look at whether or not it would be possible to revise the design of the house to deal with that difference of approximately five feet, 1.49 meters and it was determined that uh, the impact on the architecture to do that would require a significant change to this house and to just modify it for one or two or three feet, quite frankly, wasn't going to change the impact of the structure. The impact uh, just at the rear of the property out onto Lakewood Drive, this would be the facade or the rear elevation facing Lakewood Drive, but I would note that there are a number of trees between the rear of the house here the property line and the boulevard. There's a number of trees that are located within the town boulevard. And if we were to introduce those trees into the streetscape, we would have a, the effect of a screen that would occur like this. We've got a mix of deciduous and coniferous trees, and we've tried to capture those in that rendering just to give the appreciation if this is the elevation at Lakewood, the rear of the house is up a little bit from that, and then we've got the structure that's there. A couple of points just before I conclude, Mr. Chairman, I see my time is almost up. Uh, the house is not created in such a fashion that it has a relationship to Lakewood Drive. I would submit to the committee, this is a pure and true rear elevation. It will be a rear yard. The property will be used in that capacity. There are some windows on the south elevation that are taking advantage of the view towards Lake Ontario, recognizing that there is a home adjacent to the property here that's a bungalow. You can see from some aerial mapping that it's quite an expansive structure, but again, their property is oriented towards the lake as well, and this property is taking advantage of that view with some windows along here. We recognize that if number 10 were redeveloped, it's quite conceivable a two-story home would be there and that view would be impeded by the new home. Um, notwithstanding that, we are proposing the house to be oriented in this manner. Just in conclusion, Mr. Chairman, the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaws that relates to streetscape and dealing with sorry, as it relates to through, lates, through lots, is to address streetscape and how that would impact the two different streets on which the property has frontage. In this instance, Brookfield Road and Lakewood Drive at the rear. I'm going to suggest, Mr. Chairman, this house has no real relationship to Lakewood Drive in terms of driveways, doors, access, or orientation. The relationship is towards Brookfield Drive. And to that end, Mr. Chairman and committee members, my submission is that the height variance being sought when applied relative to the Lake or Brookfield Drive frontage results in a house that does comply with the height of nine meters. Those are my submissions, Mr. Chairman. I'd be pleased to answer any questions that the committee may have Thank and respond you. to any questions. Thank you. Any questions at the moment? Yes, Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just for context, your dimensions on your drawings are quite light. The variance in question is roughly the size of the peaked roof. If you were to draw a line across your elevation there to a, the nine meter height. It would be just above the top of that wall, Mr. Tulowski, through you, Mr. Chairman. This is five foot nine dimension. So okay. those nine inches are not that much, but we'd be looking at something through there. So a flat roof and you would comply. No, a flat roof has a different height requirement. Okay. So that would be the distinction that I would make. So we wouldn't comply with a flat roof provision. We'd be required to lower the structure if we propose to keep a peaked roof. Thank you. Any further questions? See none. Thank you, Mr. Brown. If you just have a seat nearby, we may uh, call upon you uh, at the end. Uh, sure, okay, there we show of hands. Yes, anything you use there that's not part of our package it remains our property now. Okay, thank you. Uh, who had a show of hands here who would like to come down first? There's no order, just uh, whoever... Race to the swiftest, it's fine. Uh, I'm uh, Hart Jansen. I live at 80 Brant Street. Um, 
And before you hear from some of the more immediate neighbors, um, I'd just like to make a fairly brief point uh, regarding the property uh, immediately to the to the north of 16 Brookfield, number 22 Brookfield. Uh, the uh, committee members may recall a uh, uh, rather involved uh, uh, session regarding the height limit on that property, which is also a through lot. Um, and there was a great deal of grief, I think, experienced by all involved. Um, and if you, if you look at your streetscape drawing, uh, you'll notice that that building has a flat roof and that flat roof was uh, decided upon after construction uh, had uh, largely been completed um, because it was recognized that that structure with a peaked roof would have exceeded the, uh, the height that was previously agreed on. Um, so I would suggest that the committee of adjustment regarding that neighboring property at number 22 got it right, uh, limiting the height to 9.13 meters from the average uh, grade uh, between uh, Lakewood and, and Brookfield Road. Um, and the requested variance that you've got in front of you now, which is to 10.49 meters, is a 17% increase uh, from what is allowed by the bylaw. So as, as uh, Mr. Brown stated, about five feet, I would suggest that that is not a minor variance that's being requested. And also in light of the grade difference with the uh, property uh, uh, just next to it, uh, closer to the lake at number 10 Brookfield, given the grade difference, it, it becomes even more of a, uh, a problem and is therefore not desirable for appropriate development of this uh, property. And that, uh, that concludes my remarks. Thank you. And I do recall the one at 22 Lakewood. It had the same relationship. And you're saying it was approved on a slope roof and it went to a flat roof? Uh, yes, that's correct. I mean, there's, there's more, uh, you know, gory detail involved. And, and uh, one of the neighbors, if, uh, I think, has a, a better uh, appreciation of the detailed uh, history there. No, no, I, I just wanted to, because I, yes. I, I mean, I, we didn't it, pull that application. That's right. It was, a, it was originally a slope, a, a peaked roof, a slope roof, and it got revised to a flat roof to meet the, uh, the bylaw requirement. And that, and that didn't come back to us. It was just done on, on the, odds of right braces? There was, there was. I, there was I didn't a, recall that one. And there I was a recall. variance requested that uh, asked for 9.13 meters. So there, so that variance was approved. But, slope roof. Uh, or flat roof. Yes, with with a slope roof, and there were some oversights, some construction errors, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, again, it was it was not allowed to proceed to a height that exceeded that 9.13, which again w w I would ag with agree the flat that roof. With that the was flat a, roof. yes, the flat roof. That's right. So the flat roof is more in character than the slope roof. Uh, I I I wouldn't. Uh, offer an opinion in terms of character. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, what I'm focusing on is just the, uh, the history, um, the, again, the agreement that 9.13 should be adhered to and, and not, you know, not several feet more uh, to be allowed, uh, which, which the owner uh, slash builder were, were arguing at that time. So again, I think the committee got it right at at 22 Brookfield, and I hope. Uh, was there a similar grade differential of three yes. meters between the uh, front and the back? I I believe it was almost identical. That okay. close I don't to three recall meters. three meters. I recall yes. something less, but maybe we'll get some uh, evidence from Miss uh, Mikalovich. Yes. Thank you. Mr. We're Mr. talking Chairman. about a year ago on that one. Uh, I think it was several years, two two to three years ago. Uh, two years ago. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chairman, to the committee, the application um, with, with respect to the 22 Brookfield Road uh, happened 
quite some time ago, about 2010, I believe, is when things had actually started. Um, and uh, it was a very similar application as well with respect to the request of increase in height. That application was presented to the committee the first time with a request of over 11 meters in height as a result of an overbuild. It was denied by this committee at that time. A second application had been submitted for a lower height. That was also denied. Then the sloped roof was removed. The resulting roof was a flat roof that we see today, and a variance was approved by this committee at 9.13 meters. For the flat roof? With a flat roof. Right. That, so it was an after-the-fact variance, right? That is correct. Right. Okay, thank you for that uh, history. Thank, any questions of Mr. Uh, Jansen? Thank you, sir. Thanks for your evidence. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Chairman, my name is Bill Ardell, and I live at 32 Brookfield Road. Uh, I must admit I'm standing here and I'm feeling uh, some sympathy for the, uh, uh, for the, hopefully, our new neighbor in the short term. However, there are a number of things that, that I'd like to point out to this committee. First of all, uh, the architect was apprised of the fact by the town that uh, it was not... Uh, it was not recognizing the, uh, the height differential, and they have, uh, they have uh, decided to proceed with the application and with the town's approval, and this is after the town planning department advised them over the fact that they were exceeding the, uh, the bylaws of nine, of nine feet. Well, I'm not understanding what, that, what you're referring to. There's, they're here for a variance tonight, so. They are. So they haven't received The variance any. application is, is to 10.49 right. versus nine which is, Correct, we yes. understand the policy to be. Well, the it's town, the zoning bylaw regulation. The zoning bylaw. Yes. We, we, uh, we understand that the town, when the original uh, architectural drawings were provided, advised them of the fact that it was exceeding the bylaw of nine meters. Yet they have, they have uh, they are proceeding with the, with the application with the support of the town, uh, which we find rather. Well, they're, they're proceeding with the application with a uh, comments from the, planning staff of the town that they find that in their opinion they find the the meets the test but that hasn't yet cleared our committee. which we consider a recommendation by the town planning yes department. correct correct yes thank you for that the the irony of this is that uh, I think as as my friend mr. Jansen just presented this this is odd to us in the fact that it's being presented after we had had a significant uh, uh, undertaking to deal with the house at 22 Brookfield in the original case, of which I was very involved, uh, we determined that the house, the community determined that the house was overbuilt. After reviewing it with town planning, they advised that it met all specifications. I then hired a surveyor who came back and said that it was 10 and a half feet, close to 11 feet, above the nine foot, uh, above the nine foot allowance. It was at that point uh, that uh, the town then advised with a recommendation to this committee to approve an adjustment to support the roof that, uh, that was already built because the house was already built. This would be the second time in a row that the, that the planning committee has made a recommendation to this committee that the policy be exceeded. And we, the recommendation that, we, that, uh, that it would be exceeded. I think that part of the decision that this committee, that your committee is faced with today is if you rule in favor of this application, then basically you are ruling against the decision that was made at 22 Brookfield. And if I were the owner of Brookfield and you and found out that you had approved this application, then I would move quickly to put up a new roof to enhance the, to enhance the visuals of my house. The second thing that I think we're struggling with is if there is a policy of nine feet, nine meters rather, regulation, what is a reasonable variance that this committee will review and approve? Is it nine feet? Is it 10 feet? Is it two feet? Is it a foot? I mean, if it were me, I would think a foot would be within reason, but when you start getting to five, seven, nine, and 10 feet, uh, it seems to me that, that the policy is not being adhered to and that, and that the committee is simply following recommendations from the town planning department, who it appears to me as well are not following the policy by providing these recommendations. 
I think that uh, Mr. Roper has done a very good job of meeting the people on the street to explaining the issues that he's dealing with. And this has nothing to do with Mr. Roper, but it has more to do with consistency of policy application. And, and I would hope at some stage, because I've asked whether or not there is anything that defines what is an acceptable variation, and I haven't had anybody able to tell me. And it, it seems to me, for the benefit of the planning department, if they knew and had some guidelines as to what policy deviation should be and would be, then things of this nature would not be, uh, would not be taking up your valuable time. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Um, who else would like to speak to the committee? Okay, Mr. Brown. J just before you uh, uh, re uh, return, can I ask you, Ms. Mahavich, it sort of begs the question, I know the uh, application at 22 Brookfield, and we know we don't plan by precedent, but there's a suggestion that the planning staff contain the height at 22 Brookfield to 9.18, and, um, and the question is why? Why is there a different view on this? Is there something between the two lots that can, di can be differentiated to help us as to, or is that because it was a different zoning bylaw in place versus a new zoning bylaw? Uh, thank you. Through you, Mr. Chairman, to the committee, um, in, in the topic of consistency being brought up, staff have actually maintained a consistent approach with respect to these through lots on the three properties um, in terms of viewing the, the, the only three properties that are actually through lots on Brookfield. Uh, and that is that... Uh, just as our comments had highlighted for you with respect to 16 Brookfield, our position was very much the same with 22 Brookfield for their first application, which was about 11 meters in height. Uh, and the basis for that is identical to the basis we provided you uh, in this instance. Uh, it comes to be that the measure of um, impact and the and the intent of the zoning bylaw to with respect to maintaining the height of nine meters is with respect to how it will look along the street of Brookfield and addressing that front frontage and front yard uh, as it relates to Brookfield. Uh, the house today as it stands at 22 Brookfield, notwithstanding the need for a variance, sits at about 7.5 meters in height measured from the Brookfield road frontage. Um, and it's a very similar proposal proposed design house. It's a two-story house with a walkout condition at the back and addresses Lakewood uh, Drive at the rear. But the position was the same. The official plan policies are the same that were reviewed for 22 Brookfield as they've been reviewed um, for 16 Brookfield, the application before you today. Uh, there wasn't a matter of setting any sort of precedence. There's only a few lots with respect to this through lot condition with the severe change in grade. Uh, you can have a through lot without a change in grade, and it might not have any impact with respect to how the height of the dwelling would be established. In this instance, these are uh, very unique circumstances with respect to uh, this particular property and why we felt in our comments that it was an appropriate variance. Okay, and just for my final uh, question, um, would a, a slope roof be more in character than a flat roof in your opinion? Or it, uh, roof roof dynamics is not as important as the uh, massing appearance on the streetscape? Through you, Mr. Chairman, uh, we've reviewed the application it's in its entirety with respect to the proposal. We didn't pick a specific element with respect to the dwelling. Uh, generally, the mass and scale of that dwelling is consistent with what we would see within the neighborhood. Uh, as we provided in our comments, there is a range of housing types within this area of both um, different uh, building forms and styles, but this particular dwelling does maintain that character by providing a mass and scale that is similar to that found in the neighborhood. I just wanted to give you the benefit of, uh, was, yes, do you have a question? A little bit unusual there, but before Mr. Brown uh, says anything, <clears throat> I thought we were gonna hear, be hearing from more people. And, and so one of the things is, is I've heard two presentations with respect to the policy, the regulations, whatever the word, but uh, what I didn't get from, from either one of you gentlemen, and I apologize, Mr. Brown and Mr. Chairman, if you'll indulge me, is either one of you saying what you didn't like about the presentation to one street or the other. I mean, you spoke to 
um, you know, past precedents and, and whatever. But the whole the whole idea usually in something like this is is to talk about how it would have a negative impact, say, to Brookfield Street or I apologize, I forget the name of the other Lake Lakefoot. Yeah. And I didn't hear either one of you do that, and I thought I might be hearing from some other people who might be bringing that up, so I failed to ask that question of either one of you. So if one of you could, wouldn't mind, um, popping up and... And I think you understand, you know, part of the whole thing on, on looking at a variance is not so much the, the numbers, yes. but it's the impact. Um, and, uh, and why do you think that from either from Brookfield or from the other street, that this house shouldn't be there. It is out of character. Well, we flipped a coin as to who would answer, the, answer your question. I guess I was nominated. Um, I think from my perspective, we're talking about the principle of policy. Uh, certainly the drawings that, uh, that I saw that were presented, I thought were attractive drawings. I don't think they would detract from the street at all. I know certainly from 10 Brookfield that it will be absolutely overpowering uh, to their house, which is the, the first house, it's the bungalow that's on the lake. And, and uh, basically it will inhibit privacy within that house, uh, within that house entirely. But uh, to your point, at some point in time, if, if that property is sold, there's no question that a, I think a fairly sizable you know, home would, uh, would end up being built on that property. So it's, it's more the issue, it's more the, the, the principle than it is necessarily the, uh, uh, the actual building itself. And, and certainly from Lakewood, uh, if you've had a chance to drive down Lakewood, uh, 22 Brookfield uh, looks very large from the back. And, and certainly there, at, at those earlier presentations, there was a, a lot of concern on the part of the Lakefield residents, or Lakewood residents as to, as to the view, and in fact, it, it, uh, uh, they were here and made presentations as to as to their viewpoints. Okay, thank you for your candid thank answer you. on that. All right, well, back to you, Mr. Brown. I think we're closing the session from the public. We'll hear from you, and then we'll take this back into committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, committee members. Uh, a couple of comments in response, if I may. With regards to the, uh, the tests and the criteria in which the committee views these applications, while I don't need to explain that to the committee, I would like to speak to the specific elements of it. The general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw and the general intent and purpose of the official plan, I believe in my review of those documents are similar and working together as it relates to this property and the variance that we're seeking this evening. A lot of it will deem or come speaks to streetscape and what's the impact of the street and completing that street and how does this house fit in with that uh, frontage along Brookfield Road and to that end, I'm going to suggest to you that the houses to the north of this property do contribute in a significant manner to the Brookfield streetscape and we do have a variety of housing styles and types and sizes. We've got single stories, story and a half, and two-story homes, and the house immediately north of us is a two-story home. To the south of us is a very low-profile bungalow, and with respect to its impact on the streetscape, quite frankly, you see a garage, you see a fence, and a very low profile, and then there's really not much else you can see standing at Brookfield Road looking to the property in terms of that streetscape. So in that respect, I would argue or submit to this committee that the impact of this home on the streetscape and how it might relate to 10 Brookfield is negligible, if at all. So the house, and looking to the north of this property, and does it complete and end the streetscape? And it's my submission to the committee that it does, and that the height is not going to be out of character with what's permitted or what's existing in the neighborhood in terms of that maximum height that you could see in this area. 10 Brookfield is comes to the test of is the application minor in nature and generally speaking that's evaluated in terms of the impact. The house to the north, our floor sits a little bit lower than their floor so relative to the streetscape and the grades along the street they sit a little higher, we sit a little lower and while our roof will sit on top of our house which ultimately makes the house a little bit taller about three or four feet higher the wall height if you were to compare that in terms of the relationship between these two properties the house to the north of us at 22, <clears throat> 22 Brookfield does sit a little taller than our house, maybe a foot, maybe two feet. Uh, the other consideration in terms of that impact is the frontage on Brookfield or on Lakewood Drive. And as I've submitted, it's, uh, I would put to this committee that there really is very little relationship of this house to Lakewood Drive in terms of how it would be using or um, impacting on Lakewood. It will be a true rear yard. 
There's a number of trees located within the now town. We're going to ask you to concentrate on what you heard in reply, not to re-argue your whole case, but we understand that relationship. Fair enough. And so the ultimately then it's the impact on 10 Brookfield and that impact, um, Mr. Chairman, there's going to be a two-story home built next door at some point, whether it's this home or another home. And it's going to have, if it were to comply with that height, five feet lower than this property or this proposed home will still create a two-story situation next door to a very low-profile bungalow. And I'm going to suggest to you that the impact would be the same uh, in terms of those two-story homes. And the final point, is this desirable for the appropriate development of the property? It's my submission to the committee this evening that this is a desirable home, that the relationship to Brookfield does comply with the zoning bylaw. It's this unique situ situation with the topography that puts us offside and why we're here this evening. So to that end, Mr. Chairman, it's my submission that this proposal does meet the four tests of a minor variance, is appropriately before this committee, and I would ask for your favorable consideration for the application as amended. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, yes, uh, just before we get to you, Ms. Allen, is there any questions of Mr. Brown? Yes. Sorry, this may seem like a weird question, but sometimes when you get evidence presented here that you hadn't thought of, is there any way that the presentation of this home can go towards the Lakewood Drive as opposed to Brookfield? It's very possible. There's two scenarios that we could deal with. We could either push the property or the house back on the property. Um, we have set the house such that the driveway has a positive slope to Brookfield Drive today. We could slide the house back. We could create a negative sloped driveway, meaning that you would drive down the driveway to the garage. That's something that the town's works department or engineering discourages because it generally creates problems. We then have a house that's lower than the street line and would have the appearance of not having a proper relationship to the street. And as we push it back, it would start to get farther and farther down the hill. One of the considerations would be to turn the house around and cre create frontage onto Lakewood and have the house front onto Lakewood. With the change in topography, it's arguable that we could raise the height of the house overall. We could change the roof pitch on this house to make a slightly steeper roof because today we're at the top half, if you will, of that uh, average grade. If we push it to the lake view, we're at the bottom half of that average grade. There would be some more flexibility for us with respect to height should we reorient the house to Lakewood Drive. So those are the two scenarios that we did look at, we did consider and contemplate. We felt that this was the better development for this property. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? So, yeah. Ms. Mihalovich? Thank you, Mr. Chairman uh, and committee for your further indulgence on this application. Uh, staff have had some ongoing discussions with the applicant as it was previously indicated. Um, the application before you now is amended due to some of that dialogue. Uh, additional dialogue that had happened um, among staff after the report had been uh, provided was in re reference to Mr. Brown's image, and I, if he may put it up, which is the rear yard condition that shows the vegetation. Staff um, are encouraged by the applicant's approach as well to maintain most of that vegetation. Uh, and in fact, as he'd indicated earlier, there are about six trees which are within the town's boulevard. So these are town municipal trees which will be protected uh, through the municipal um, tree bylaws that we have in place. Further to that, staff would uh, respectfully ask that the committee consider an additional condition for this evening, which is that the applicant submit a landscaping plan which would show a screen along the Lakewood Drive frontage to the satisfaction of the Director of Planning. The intent of the request for this condition is to further bolster the approach by providing a, a natural or vegetative screen along Lakewood Drive, uh, which again goes to the applicant submission that there is really no relationship that they are intending to maintain along Lakewood that we would want to encourage the more naturalization of that rear lot and, and further again uh, reduce any visual impacts or mitigate any visual impacts that may be perceived by uh, residents on, on the Lakewood side. I, I have exactly it written both. down. I have it written down. I can provide to the Secretary Treasurer. Well, maybe just flash it up on the screen so we can all see it. Okay. If you don't mind my chicken scratch. No, no, that's fine. It's just something that we can all have a look because... Uh, I got that the applicant submitted a landscaping plan to demonstrate an additional vegetative buffer along Lakewood Drive frontage to the satisfaction of director planning. Yes, you got it, Mr. Chairman. Landscaping plan showing the screening along the Lakewood Drive frontage to the satisfaction of director planning. We'll just have to let our secretary treasurer, maybe you can submit that. Okay, thank you. 
Any questions? Seeing none, thank you. We'll, uh, uh, Mr. Brown, in fairness, uh, is, not, is you, are you okay uh, well, with that? Well, I was going to ask, it's not something that uh, you've heard or seen before. This yeah. is something new, and in fairness, we should allow you to, before we make a ruling on this application. I, I was aware that uh, staff were contemplating that, and um, Ms. Mihalovic and I have spoken about that. In general, I'm not objection to the, the request. I understand that, Mr. Chairman, very well. Uh, while I have no specific objections to the request or requirement for a fence, I would note two things, that the trees that are providing the bulk of that buffer, if you will, the visual screening, are located within the limits of the town boulevard, which is a very generous and wide boulevard. So to that end, uh, putting a fence behind those trees is effective, uh, akin to belts and braces screening or fence uh, something that would create that visual barrier it could be vegetative screening it could be yes uh, the second point that i would note is that we haven't had any feedback from the immediate neighbors or the neighbors on lakewood expressing this concern however if it's something that the committee feels is appropriate i'm in your hands and i won't uh, object to that issue okay thank you uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, for the record, the condition is worded as to say screen. I'm not sure uh, at the moment that a fence would be the appropriate method uh, to provide that screening. That, that is why we've asked for a landscape plan to allow for flexibility. It could include additional plantings that would provide that vegetative screen along that frontage uh, to the satisfaction of the director. There okay. is an intended flexibility. We wish to work with the applicant further in order to provide that and whatever that outcome may be. Okay, thank you. I've seen the show of hand, but we're, we're, uh, we have to eventually put some closure on the application. Uh, well, you have to come up. Uh, we're going to take you a little bit of, out of order just to give some leeway because uh, things do emerge during the hearing process and you want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to be heard. Right, thank you. But Hi. Don't, so please don't raise any new issues because no, then we got to retry the whole thing all over again. I actually genuinely have a question. Okay, so, so we need your my name, name and address Tatiana for the record. Tatiana Memos. Sorry, say again. Tatiana Memos. Okay. I'm co-owner of uh, 22 Brookfield. Okay. We moved in. It'll be uh, three years ago this Christmas. Okay. So my question, because um, what I'm wondering is, I haven't heard anything to definitively explain why, in fact, the roof was made to come down on 22 Brookfield uh, from the previous owner. So, okay, we're, we're, we're not even going to answer that. It's but a I'm, question. But I'm wondering, but because does that mean question. I can go ahead and build my hang roof on, now? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We're here to deal with 16 Brookfield. Yes. Uh, my you have neighbor. a question, and it's legitimate. You should ask that to the plan department, independent of this process. We're not here okay. to relitigate 22 or to readdress 22. You had Ms. Mahalovich given you a card. You're more than welcome okay. to call and try to uh, figure that out. We're here to address the four tests for 16 Brookfield. I understand okay. that. Thank you. Right, but you do want to hear from neighbors, correct? And well, my we want to hear on the four tests, not what happened uh, seven no, years ago. No, I know ago. it's not about what happened, but part of the beauty of living in this neighborhood and what made us actually choose to live in this neighborhood is that we have heard from all the neighbors as well that people actually, the committees actually adhere to policies and procedures and precedents and people take into account the whole neighborhood and I mean I've been was at another committee uh, whatever when so is there anything that you heard uh, from uh, from the the combined spokesperson that is different from your views or are they the same sorry say that again so what you heard tonight yes. from uh, the two gentlemen that were before us are you share the same views or do you have something different to add well I have something different to add Can we in the hear sense what of that you asked is? about the impact correct that's we want one to know of the what issues. That you want to is. know the impact. Yes. Well, there is an impact, right? It's definitely going to obscure all sorts of views. It's going to directly impact our property, absolutely. Now, within fairness, we always knew, of course, somebody's going to come and build, right? But there will is there is an impact. We're losing views from the entire south side of our house. Okay, we, we, we heard that from the gentleman that represented okay. the opinion. So we heard that. That's not you something heard. new. We want to hear something new. Okay. Well, we I heard, would like we heard to, that yeah. uh, that 22 had a history. We also heard that 10 is uh, is um, is a different uh, character, and we heard all that. We want to hear something new on impact. Yes, but what I'd like to is this not also a little bit of a give and take? Because what I'd like to hear is the logic and reasoning of why one would be approved and why one wouldn't. So I don't understand the distinction being made on these two properties I, I on the streetscape, you, for I example. I encourage you to talk to Ms. Mihalovich because okay. I asked her that question and she answered okay. it.
but that's my point. But the answer was not clear. It, there, there did not seem to be any, the whole point of the roof, for example, making an impact on the streetscape, saying that in fact it wouldn't, that it would in fact beautify the streetscape on Brookfield. I would venture to say this is the exact same argument for our property, yet that was quashed by virtue of the fact that neighbors were up in arms, they didn't want such a large property around, obfuscating their views, and therefore that was heard and adhered to. And now we have the, basically the very same issue really at hand, and all of a sudden those same reasons are just being dismissed. And I'm having a hard time understanding, like it just, there's no fairness really there. So you have Ms. Mihalovich's card on the right hand and she can probably review for you again the history on 22. I don't need but the review we, of the history. But, what but I need an explanation as to the reasoning. That's we will take your comments under consideration. We will take your comments. Is there any questions you have, uh, anyone from Ms. Mihalovich? Okay, thank you very much for your time. Uh, Mr. Brown, just to be fair, is there anything you wish to add because uh, uh, this is all stuff that came after we closed the hearing and we want to make sure we hear everyone's opinion and views on it so we can make an informed decision. I understand, Mr. Chairman. I have no further submissions. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll take this man to committee. Who would like to move a recommendation? Let's get the lights. Mr. Tulowski, are you ready? I, I see you're looking over. Let's get a recommendation on the floor. Let's uh, have a discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Chair, I'm actually going to move this application as amended be approved, uh, finding that it meets the four tests of the Planning Act and uh, recognizing that we have had a number of members of the community speaking in opposition uh, Mr. Chair, I believe the intent of the bylaw for the through lot is not to limit the height of the building as it relates to Brookfield. It's the intent is to limit the impact of massing on the Lakewood Drive frontage. And given the depth of the lot, the um, vegetation, the width of the boulevard, uh, I do not find an impact in, in re that regard to uh, so Mr. Chair. I do believe that this is a minor variance and uh, I would also make it subject to development proceeding in accordance with the drawings pr provided and uh, that a permit issue within two years. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm not gonna move the additional condition requested by staff. The uh, variance here is a low pitch, five, six foot high roof at the top of the building. I'm not seeing the uh, benefit of providing additional low landscaping to uh, screen the ground floor or second floor, which is not subject to this uh, application. Okay, thank you. Discussion, I recommendation. I'd just like to add that I'm gonna support that. Uh, um, I too was interested to know if there was any differentiation between 22 and 16, because uh, although we don't plan by precedent, we do like to maintain the, uh, the streetscape, streetscape and the character and the massing. And I was sufficiently satisfied. First of all, I'd like to say this is probably one of the most thorough reports that I've seen on this particular thing dealing with through lots. It uh, provides ample explanation and analyzes all the matters that we, we would. Uh, so I'd like to thank the planners for doing that. Uh, and, but I do find that there was no differentiation in approach uh, between uh, the approach staff took on 22 and now t uh, 16. In fact, I find that there's a, a complete consistency in approach and the height that has been recommended or, or uh, the height variance sought and the recommendation of staff that they support that. I find that to be entirely consistent for, for this pocket of the town of Oakville. So I'm going to support the recommendation to approve. Any further discussion? See none. All those in support subject to those two conditions. Those opposed? See none. Applications being approved. Um, we'll proceed to application CAVA 208 2016 at 64 Skipper Lane.
Evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Good David evening. Nelson, Ruth Victor and Associates, 481 North Service Road West, Oakville, Ontario, Unit A33, and I will be speaking to the application. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Uh, just before we proceed, is anyone here this evening that has an interest in application CAVA 208 2016 at 64 Skipper Lane? Okay, uh, you're here in opposition? No. You're here in support? Yes, sir. Do you happen to be the client? No. Oh, you're neighbors? Yes, sir. Okay, and you've written letters in support, correct? I have, sir. Okay, just so we can uh, have it, you're, one of you are Mr. Zoran Popovich? Norm Hall? No. Okay, so there's two other letters that we have here in support, I guess. Okay, sir, uh, do you wish a presentation? Maybe you can come down and help the process by giving us your name and address and registering your support, and then uh, we may proceed. Yes. Mr. Chairman, my name is Rod Rafuli. I live on 60 Skipper Lane, which is adjacent to the 64. The yes. South side. I did send a letter of support yesterday through yes. an email. Okay, and, thank uh, you. I'm available to... Uh, to thank you. We'll, we'll see if there's any need for further presentation by you. Anyone else? Okay, so again, anyone here opposing application CAVA 208-2016 at 64 Skipper Lane? Members, this is recommended for... Oh, does not satisfy all four tests. Okay, so yeah, I think we'll need a presentation on this. Okay, so we do have letters of support, and we do have uh, people here in attendance. Proceed, Mr. Uh, Nelson. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Before I uh, commence, I just wanted to uh, point out uh, an error on the uh, agenda cover sheet. Uh, this uh, property is indeed located in Ward 1, not Ward 2, as uh, pointed out to me by uh, Councillor Robinson, who was sitting behind me. And I also want to acknowledge the presence of the Councillor in the Chambers. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Robertson. Mr. Chairman, the um, issue at hand here is uh, conformity uh, with the intent and general purpose of the uh, official plan. And I'm uh, pointing out section 28.8.2 of the official plan, which says it is the intention and expectation that non-conforming uses, building or structures shall eventually cease and be replaced by uses, buildings or structures that conform with the intent of the plan and the zoning bylaw. Uh, and then it goes on to say, in special circumstances, however, it may be appropriate to consider the extension or enlargement of non-conforming uses. I will, in my presentation, speak to special circumstances, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Just to focus our lens here, are we talking about a legal non-conforming use extension or enlargement of legal non-conforming use in this instance? Uh, well, I don't intend to extend um, or enlarge the non-conforming non use, Mr. Chairman. We are here to seek recognition of the building that exists today. And no, I but is the legal non-conforming use? Depends on your interpretation, Mr. Chairman, and I will uh, allude to that in my uh, presentation. I, I just want to make sure we're under the right authority of the Planning Act. Are we? Under yes, I understand, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the wording of the variances was carefully crafted by the legal department and the manager of zoning in the building department. Those are not my words. It's a legal non-conforming dwelling. Yes, that would be the case, Mr. Chairman. Certainly is under bylaw 1984-63, and I have information to uh, provide to you to uh, demonstrate okay. that. Let, let's proceed. I may have more questions. Okay, go ahead. I'll deal first with the... Uh, side yard uh, issue, Mr. Chairman, and I'm going to place uh, before you, and I will give this to you, a copy of a bylaw 1983-166. I'm quite familiar with this bylaw, Mr. Chairman. I may have written it, uh, having been employed at the Town of Oakville at the time. Uh, this is with respect to the subdivision of the former George Clinton Duke uh, estate out in uh, West Oakville. 
And this bylaw specifically recognizes the encroachment of a corner of the building onto what would have been the one foot reserve and a fairly substantial widening of uh, Lakeshore Road that was acquired through the plan of subdivision. That uh, widening amounts to uh, approximately eight meters. Uh, at the time, uh, Lakeshore Road uh, required a total width of 36 meters, which amounted to eight meters on either side. Uh, under today's condition, that uh, width is now 26 meters. So if we were dealing with this application today through a plan of subdivision, we wouldn't have a problem here. One of the conditions that we dealt with at the uh, time, 1983, was uh, with respect to that side yard. I present before you here a, an application uh, that was approved by the Committee of Adjustment in uh, October of 1983. Uh, and uh, this is with re respect to the um, uh, requirement for a zero uh, side yard. Uh, on that property. We couldn't uh, deal with a negative side yard. Uh, as I noted earlier, we uh, have a building that uh, extends beyond the uh, 0.3 meter reserve and into the uh, road widening itself. So this uh, particular variance recognized the zero condition and uh, it was approved as it was minor in nature. So th that is one of the... How does that decision relate to, uh, to, to Skipper Lane. I missed that. I understand, uh, Mr. Chairman, speaking with uh, Peter Cozell uh, this evening, uh, this is in reference to section 14.1.2, uh, I believe it is, and I have that here. I'll, I'll put it up for you and you can see what it is. No, no, but you just showed us a decision for, for, uh, for Lakeshore. That, that's correct. That number is now changed to 64 uh, Skipper oh, Lane. Okay. Sorry so about that. that. Just understood you. Yes, yes it okay. was 3210 Lakeshore at the time. 3210 Lakeshore is now Became 64 Skipper Lane. Okay. Okay. And uh, I had a chat with Mr. Cozell uh, this evening, 4.30, with respect to this section of the uh, bylaw 2014-14 uh, about legal nonconformity. And uh, I wanted that? to point Which out section? the blue color on that shows us that that uh, section of the bylaw is still under appeal. Three of the appeals uh, were lodged uh, through Ruth Victor and Associates. Two of them have been resolved by uh, incorporation of special provisions into bylaw 2014-014 uh, through the Ontario Municipal Board. And these special provisions recognize um, variances that were approved and would have disappeared over time under the uh, auspices of bylaw 2014-014. I think the magic date there uh, is anything prior to 2011 would ultimately disappear, not recognized by the bylaw. So Mr. Cozell uh, did inform me I have to deal with both bylaws uh, under this issue of legal nonconformity. So we have this earlier variance uh, with respect to 1965-136, which was succeeded by 84-63. So I think we're covered there. Uh, there is a further variance that uh, resulted um, from changes to the bylaw in 1990s. Um, my, uh, not this particular owner, but the previous owner to uh, this property did uh, obtain a building permit for a fairly substantial addition uh, on the uh, property. And at that so time... So just, just before you put that there, you were pointing to which section of the zoning bylaw there, 412.2 or 412.3? Um, I'm referring to 4.12 uh, and uh, these... 412.2? Uh, legal existing lots or legal existing legal use? Legal existing use prior to the bylaw that does not meet the minimum lot area lot frontage, no. I'm not dealing with that. Can you just point which one? Because I, I, cause there's a difference between 412.2 and 412.3. Yes, there definitely is. 412.2 uh, wanna... deals with lot frontage and, uh, and lot areas, and we're not dealing with that here this evening. We're dealing with a side yard variance and a gross floor area uh, issue. And uh, No, but you, you, you put up this zoning bylaw, and you directed me to a section of the bylaw. Which section is it? 412.1 uh, is the one that uh, is Up above, okay, because it's not showing here. So I just, can you oh, slide okay. it down? 
Okay, there you go. Now I couldn't see that. Illegal existing buildings and structures. So that, that says if you have a, an existing building or structure that doesn't conform to the bylaw, you can enlarge it, repair it, renovate it, as long as it doesn't cause you to increase a degree of nonconformity. Correct, Mr. Chairman. And uh, as I pointed out, that section of the So if you have a zero front yard setback, you can continue with that as long as you don't make it further zero, like more negative. <laughs> Correct. If that's possible. And uh, as I pointed out, this section of the bylaw is not enforced in effect because of uh, various appeals. And I, I just wanted to point out to you that uh, right. two of the appeals have been settled through uh, special provisions in the bylaw. So uh, it is one uh, example of how uh, these things can be dealt with. The third one uh, under Ruth Victor and Associates is uh, before the board and will be heard in uh, February. Right, so that's all of Section 412, legal nonconformity is still up in air. Yes, in blue. that's correct, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so we understand that, yep. Okay, now back to the uh, drawing, uh, showing here one and a half story addition. Mr. Nielsen, we're going to give you more time because I think this warrants some more attention. Uh, it's, I'm uh, still trying to hear the punchline here on okay. why it's legal nonconformity. It, so. it, it is relatively complex, Mr. Chairman. On the surface, it appears to be very simple, or just an argument between uh, ourselves and planning, but I think there's more to it than that. Thank you. So let's have a look at this uh, one and a half story addition. Uh, permit was issued in 1987. Sometime in the 1990s, the Town of Oakville passed an amendment to Bylaw 8463 that uh, put in place a gross floor area ratio. Uh, and um, this uh, exceeds the gross floor area ratio that is permitted under uh, that amendment to Bylaw 8463. So uh, back to being, um, in our interpretation, a legal nonconforming uh, situation, maybe an illegal so we got to we, we be careful. This is yes, why I've been be asking. Very careful. You, you know, in the beginning, you flashed up the, uh, the official plan policy about legal nonconforming. We're talking about use. That's a context of use. When you talk about legal noncomplying zoning standards, that's totally different. This is why I asked in the beginning, are we doing a, an extension or enlargement, or are we doing a, a variance for recognizing uh, legal nonconforming use? You're, we're not talking about use here. We're talking no. about standards and regulations. So that policy in the official plan that you, you indicated, and perhaps I'm going to ask the staff the same question. Not now, because I want to let Mr. Nelson finish. I got the same question. I have the same question. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not focusing on the right test, I don't think. Maybe no, uh, I, I want to be corrected if I'm I, wrong. I understand, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I had the same uh, question, and uh, Ms. Victor had the same question. I went back and looked at this section of the OP, it says non-conforming uses, buildings, and structures. Uses. That's right. That's the title. Legal non-conforming uses. Yes, but in the text, it talks about buildings and structures. So uh, I, we have to be very careful here. Well, that's when you consider extension or enlargement to buildings or structures for legal non-conforming use. That's entirely consistent with the regime under Section 45. Okay, I understand. Because the use is residential property, and it continues to be used for residential. There's nothing legal nonconforming about that. That's correct. It's permitted use. Maybe the setbacks have changed because of the zoning bylaw migration to different standards, but it doesn't change the use. No, it doesn't change the use. So we're in agreement. We're in agreement. Well, we're going to get your uh, thoughts in a minute, so I'd like you to finish. Okay, uh, so as I mentioned, Mr. Chairman, we uh, have a situation that arose sometime in the 1990s uh, with respect to the gross floor area, and uh, because we want to make sure that we are covering both bylaw in 1884-63, which we know we've dealt with, it's, it's legal nonconforming uh, under that situation because that new bylaw came into force after the permit was issued. The one and a half story addition was lawfully constructed at that time, and the uh, side yard uh, had been appropriately dealt with through a variance uh, approved by the Committee of Adjustment. Uh, it's a different question as to whether those uh, approvals apply to uh, bylaw 2014-14 uh, because they have never been before this committee. And uh, that is really the purpose of the application tonight is to, to pull those two variances forward uh, under the new zoning bylaw.
So if I understand correctly, other than the fact it's complicated, do you have an official plan policy that says uh, that over time these non conforming buildings, whatever that is, because when we talk about the concept of legal non-conforming, it addresses the issue of use. When you have these non-conforming buildings, they seize over time and they need to be replaced with conforming buildings. In other words, let's say you have a residential subdivision and the front yard setback standard is six meters and then all of a sudden it changes to 10 meters in the future, all those buildings should be knocked down and replaced with conforming buildings. Under an extreme interpretation of the official plan, Mr. Chairman, I agree with what you've just said. So, so that, that uh, policy intent was driven into the zoning bylaw by section, what you showed us up there, that says Correct. how legal non-conforming uses are protected. Yes. And it says that you can enlarge these buildings subject to not increasing their non-compliance. And I guess you're saying I'm here to seek different variances on the regulations. Yes. Not on the use. Uh, uh, on the regulation, oh, not geez. on the use. No, and, and if we look at the variance wording, it talks about existing building. It doesn't extend the life of that building at all. Okay, just before, Ms. I know I know we have lots of questions for you, and I'm going to give you lots of time to explain this because I want to make sure that all members of the committee explore every question they have with the applicant so you can hear it all in fairness and give us your comprehensive review on this. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Uh, just one question. Charlois. Sorry. Just one question for you. And I'm appreciating the academic nature of this thing, but I'm trying to read the section 28.8 that says the intention that non-conforming uses, comma, buildings or structures shall eventually cease. And then the final line says in special circumstances, however, it may be appropriate to consider the extension or enlargement. And it only talks about non-conforming uses. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't talk about buildings or structures. No, no. it. it uh, reverse back so, to uses as opposed to buildings and structures. It's a very confusing section right. in my mind. So yeah. you're, just to be clear then, you're not, what, what's No, I'm, I'm pointing out that there are some unusual situations here. We, okay. we have a side yard variance that was driven by a plan of subdivision and we have a floor area variance that is driven by but, a building permit that was issued sometime 30 years ago. But, but you're asking to expand the structure, make the structure bigger, mm -hmm. and you're telling me to take a look at section 28.8 and it doesn't allow you to make no, it bigger. No, no, I'm not asking, I'm not asking to expand that structure at all. It, it, but that section, just to be clear, talks about uses. I'm pretty sure. Yes, and, it, it, and you can extend and enlarge a legal non-conforming use. That's a different section of the Planning Act. That's correct. Because under legal non-conforming use, it doesn't comply with any standards of the zoning bylaw. Right. No. Because, for example, you have a factory in the middle of a residential zone, and you look, it's all residential. You have certain height setbacks, and, and because that use is legal nonconforming, there's absolutely no standard that that building would comply with. So you need to go seek different approval, which is an extension or enlargement of the building structure. Right. The extension or enlargement of the legal nonconforming use. Yes. We wouldn't even consider the zoning bylaw in that no. instance. Right, and and perhaps it's... Too, right? Exactly. It wouldn't even be under 45.1, exactly. so we wouldn't be yeah. talking about it here yeah. at all. No. We wouldn't be talking about the four tests. But are you, just to get back to your point, maybe I'm missing it. When you ask that the maximum residential floor area, which is zoned at 39%, be increased to 42.86, you're telling me it's not an increase? It's, no, that's what exists today. But you're not asking to increase it over the existing zoning? You're just asking us to recognize what's there today. To recognize there today. what is there today. And you're, the argument you're making is that the official plan allows you to make the building bigger. I just don't get it. Well, I, I think that's a pertinent uh, point. Yes. Okay. All right. I'll listen. <laughs> Why do we have to have these applications just before Christmas? <laughs> uh, any just questions? to make your life existing, uh, exciting. <laughs> Certainly is. Okay. We'd like to hear from you, Ms. Mihalovich. I think uh, you, you've heard our questions. I, I'm still a little bit confused as to why we're treating this as a legal nonconforming status. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and you know what? I mean, please don't venture into legal opinions. Just give us your planning opinion. I promise. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, if I may, thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. Um, I am also a little bit confused by the presentation this evening. However, perhaps I can go back to how staff prepared their comments and the basis of which we prepared our comments, which I think um, maybe provides a little bit more clarity. My understanding, the staff's understanding of the, the nature of this application is that the building as it sits today, which is a dwelling, single detached dwelling, which is a permitted use under the bylaw, has non-complying uh, components as the bylaw has evolved over time. It is my understanding that the applicant is the purchaser under a purchase and sale agreement, wishes to ensure that there are no encumbrances on the land with respect to these non-conforming or non-complying elements. They are seeking a variance before you this evening to change from a legal non-conforming status, which is a legal non-compliant status, which is a legal right uh, to hold uh, under the bylaw, um, and under the official plan, to ask for a variance under Section 45.1 as if it were to now legalize those types of conditions. Imagine if uh, a new dwelling was proposed under 45.1 with these types of regulations that are being proposed. That is staff's understanding of the nature of this application. It is not an enlargement or extension of what is being proposed uh, as referenced by the official plan policy that um, Mr. Nelson has presented. If we actually focus on the first half, which speaks to the intention and expectation is that non-conforming uses buildings or structures will cease over time. This is the expectation. Um, and we don't have a special circumstance where there is a proposed extension or enlargement. And then further, the reference to the policy, uh, the regulation and the bylaw for 12.1, that just allows for legal non-conforming buildings to have additions put onto them if they're maintaining that legal non-conforming status, which but, is not what's being proposed right. here. So let, let me just take it back a bit, because I understand what you're saying. Like, I'm still confused why, why... In fact, I, I'm even wondering why we even have jurisdiction to deal with this application to start off with, because uh, on my previous assumption, you, we now have a new in-zone bylaw. We had, let's say, a nine-and-a-half uh, nine height limit southeast Oakville. Let's just assume, you know, it's just as a hypothetical example, and the new in-zone bylaw comes into place and it reduces the height down to nine meters. Everyone's built at nine-and-a-half. We don't see a rush of application before the committee to say recognize and maintain the existing height of nine and a half. We have the protection under the Planning Act that says you can continue with your use. We're not gonna ask you to chop half a meter off because we changed the bylaw. And we're not gonna ask you to come to committee to get uh, recognition that you can stay at nine because there's protection under the Planning Act for that. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, you are correct. And that was our initial submissions to the applicant as to why the application was coming before us at all. However, it is their right to make the application that they have made. It is their right to seek um, an approval from this committee with respect to their request to go from a legal non-compliant status on their property that they have every right to have as a virtue of the bylaw changing to legal status through that variance application. But, but the, the, <laughs> the, the problem is, and, I, and, I, and I'm not laughing, I'm just laughing because I'm, I'm getting a little bit confused. First, we have to have proper jurisdiction to deal with the application, and I question in my mind whether we do. Secondly, when you subject yourself to the approval process, you might find out there's no support because the position of the plan department is does not satisfy. And all we're doing is we're maintaining the existing structure. We're not changing anything. Through you, Mr. Chairman, you are correct, and also staff have also acknowledged that should the committee choose to approve this application um, to acknowledge those existing conditions, should the applicant redevelop the property, tear the building down, well, those variances now go away as well. Correct. They would not be able to then build anything new. So we're back in that cycle of what's the difference between the legal non-compliant status and then what they would be seeking with you here this evening. And your jurisdictional question, I, I think, is valid. Our legal department has worded the variance on the basis that the request that's coming before you is under a 45-1. It's to be treated as if it were a new condition, notwithstanding that 
it does exist today and has a legal status as legal non-compliant. But we're not changing the built form. There's nothing to approve. It's almost asking for us to give a stamp of approval of a legal status that's got protection under the Planning Act. Where do we have authority to do that? Through you, Mr. Chairman, again, staff had asked the same question, and I think that's what's highlighted in our comments, which were not supportive of this request on the basis that there is protection for legal non-compliant uh, elements. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. You're saying you don't need it, so therefore there's no need to support it. It's almost like Correct. saying we don't have jurisdiction to deal with it. But if you want to deal with it, we don't support it. I don't want to provide a legal opinion on your jurisdictional elements, but staff have provided comments based on what they felt their opinion was with respect to continuing legal non-compliant uses, which already have a legal do, status. Do you understand the, the conundrum, Act. Mr. Uh, uh, Nelson? Can I, you tell I us do. why you brought this application? We brought the application because it's a condition of uh, an offer of purchase and sale, that it, it be legalized. And did you get a legal opinion that it's required? And if you have, can you share it with us? No, I do not have a legal opinion, Mr. Chairman. Just do, a request from the Do realtor. you think we have jurisdiction to deal with this application? Do you think we have more power than the Planning Act? No, you don't have more power than the Planning Act. You are bound by the Planning Act. Right. I agree. So do um, you agree that we need jurisdiction in order to deal with variances? I think you have dealt with similar situations in the past, Mr. Chairman. But um, that's where, that's where it's uh, to recognize and maintain an existing side yard because they're building an addition. Because there's some improvements that's happening and they say, well, since you're at the committee, to seek a variance on height, you better clean up the other stuff so you can have full compliance. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'll take you back to my own house at 69 Dunn Street about a year ago uh, where you did approve uh, existing conditions with respect to a front yard and a floor area. But I, I have your, I kept your plans. I remember that. And you yes. were making improvements. No, I did not. The subsequent owner did, and he came back to you. Right, I someone and made, sought additional someone made variances, some improvement. But I, I did not. I only sought to to obtain um, approval from this committee with respect to existing conditions, and that was on the advice of somebody who is no longer with the building department. He has retired, but he did say to me, "You should do this because if you ever take down a piece of that building, you've lost that floor area." Well, that's true. And that, I think that, that is that the I issue agree. here, that, Mr. That Chairman. That I agree with. Yes. That and I, I think that could with. be an issue here, Mr. Chairman. But if they take it down, you've got to comply with zoning. That's, yes. when you, that's when you come back to the committee and for approval. And they would have to come back. But where there's no improvements, what's there to approve? Anyways, maybe, maybe it's all academic. I'd like to hear what my members of the committee have to say. Just a question for planning. <clears throat> I kind of agree. I, I seem to remember a, a couple of applications coming in front of us which simply asked us, in fact, one in particular, it seems to me that the person wanted to sell the property, and they were asking that we recognize a setback of some shed or garage or something like that. Because there was an error in uh, the way the building was built. They overshot the side right. yard or something. And therefore, they were, they were there. I, I don't want to... Yeah. I don't want to hypothesize whether they were legal conforming or anything like that, but we, we did simply recognize that, and that was it. That's all we did. Is this... Where is this one different from, say, an application like that? Through you, Mr. Chairman, to the committee members, I'm not quite sure I understand your uh, example because it sounds like that particular dwelling was an error in the construction, so it wouldn't have been a legal non-conforming condition. It would have been to correct a, an error that they had made. Um, and I can't speak, frankly, on any past uh, applications that have been brought forward to you. I, I can't specifically recall um, bringing an application of, of similar nature in front of you with similar position. Um, however, we're here in front of you today under the current practices uh, that we have today That's right. with respect to this application. And it's staff's opinion that the property has a legal right to exist in its current condition. And should the committee approve such a variance that acknowledges this setbacks or acknowledges the the floor area for instance should they choose to redevelop they would no longer comply with the plans that are attached to this uh application and they would be subject to go back to the committee for the same variance if they wanted to still maintain that same floor area in a different form so so mr nelson you agree that if if any portion of this building was demolished or if you demolished the whole building the variance that you may or may not receive through what you're requesting today evaporates. That's correct, Mr. Chairman. Right. 
It does. It does. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. I think I understand. Do you have any questions, Mr. Teleski? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, to uh, Kate, I've got over 12 years on this committee. Uh, Mr. Nelson, between sitting on this side of the table, standing at the podium, or being a staff member, probably has more than he cares to admit. Um, this, to me, seems like a complete reversal of position on staff from what, the way it's always dealt with these applications. And uh, the two issues are the one Mr. Nelson brought, because I remembered that as well, a year or two ago, he came effectively with the exact same application on his personal house and it was supported by staff. There was no change to the building. And if we just fast forward on the agenda to Belvedere, um, as staff always have when an application comes forward looking for a variance, it has been the position of the town to legalize all those existing non-compliance so I don't understand what's different here and how this application, he's asking to legalize this house as it stands with no improvements, and in Belvedere is being asked to legalize an existing garage plus some other variances. I don't see the difference and why the town's taking the position if you're adding something to the house, you need to legalize the non-compliance but in this case, staff doesn't support legalizing the noncompliance. It seems completely inconsistent just on the same agenda and inconsistent in the way the town has always dealt with these issues. Through you, Mr. Chairman, to the committee member. Uh, again, uh, speaking with respect to past positions or past decisions, there has obviously been an evolution with respect to not only staffing, um, but also a lot of the direction and approach taken with respect to planning um, comments on committee of adjustment applications and minor variance applications since anything previous to that. Uh, when we have an application before us, similar to the application further down the agenda this evening, which is looking at the property fulsomely as a result of a new addition or an extension or something that is wanting to maintain a condition. We are evaluating it on the same basis that is that an appropriate um, appropriate regulations to to have with respect to the four tests under 45.1. I don't believe that staff are taking a different approach with this particular application. We've assessed the nature of this application. All of the components are legal, non-compliant with respect to regulations. Staff do not believe that it's appropriate to extend a more legalized uh, element of the property where they currently have a legal non-conforming status today. Non-compliant, non my apologies. On that basis, then, on Belvedere, shouldn't we strike to permit the existing attached garage and just have to permit the proposed addition? M M Mr. So Mr. Tulowski, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to rule that a little bit out of sequence because when we come to that, uh, we'll discuss why that variance is required in contrast to why it's not required here, in my view. Um, I, I don't think we should be meddling with other applications before they're even announced, so... Uh, you may you may raise that question. I, we understand your position, but I think there are differences, and we'll let uh, that that application unfold as it may. Uh, so, with all respect, we're going to probably defer that question till till later. Is there any further questions? Okay, we'll take this matter into committee. Thank you, Mr. And, Chairman. Uh, So who would like to move a recommendation? Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I'm actually interested in the answer to that question that Mr. Telowski raised, so I'm going to make a motion that we defer our, can we defer our decision until after we hear 38 Belvedere? Uh, um, <laughs> with your indulgence and the indulgence of the applicant? Because well, it's, it's I'm quite unusual. I think the applicant deserves an answer on this application rather than uh, leave his faith pending on some other application. 
you can be directed by your conscience and by the evidence and determine it the way you think is appropriate. We'll have a discussion on that. But I don't believe uh, ruling on another application should have effect on the current application that's before us. We're not bundling these all together. You know, we're not going to wait till the last one to hear all the evidence before we decide on the previous one. That would be a dangerous way to, to uh, administer no, justice. No, I, I don't believe I've ever asked for that before yeah. either. So we're going to continue on this application. All right. So who would like to move a recommendation? Mr. Tulowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm going to move the application before us be approved as applied for. I find that meets the four tests of the Planning Act and to be consistent with the way this committee and the town has dealt with these matters in the past. I'd also reference that uh, there are letters of support from the community and no issues of objection and uh, make it that the uh, variances would apply to the drawings at the existing house as provided to the committee. Okay, thank you. D discussion on that recommendation? Okay, I'd just like to put on the record just because uh, it's important to have this. Uh, uh, I, I think staff got it right uh, on this one. They, they say in their last sentence before conclusion, the request of variances are not appropriate for the site as the existing conditions have a right to remain, and that's true. They have a right to remain. And they have protection under the Planning Act, and uh, our decision doesn't change that. In fact, uh, I, like I, we had the discussion, uh, I don't see why we're even here to recognize and maintain an existing structure where no improvements are proposed. If there's an improvement proposed, which we may hear later, uh, that changes the context of our analysis. Um, the refusal here doesn't change your, will not change your legal status to remain at all. And I have uh, extreme doubts that if this matter was to be appealed by either party to the board, that the results would be any different than saying, well, you have protection, why do you need belt and suspenders? Uh, so um, I'm not going to support this because, I, like I said earlier, it, uh, it starts a very dangerous trend where we do, where the town changes only by us for whatever reason, setbacks change, heights change, gross flow areas change, and the message we're sending is every time there's a change in the zoning bylaw, everyone needs to demolish their home, which is not the case, to make sure it complies. Because that's why those protections under the Planning Act were put in there, to prevent such uh, plethora of non-compliant non buildings. Uh, your building structures are allowed to remain where they are, despite the changes in bylaws. That includes legal non-compliant buildings and legal non-conforming buildings. So on that basis, I'm not going to support an application which I don't think has a foundation for us to consider in the first place, so I'm not going to support the recommendation. Mr. Hardcastle? Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm just going to um, note that it appears that the legal department was circulated this application. They provided no clarification with respect to um, this application. We have a planning opinion in front of us, and... Uh, uh, I'm going to keep my um, positioning with respect to um, uh, more planning sided. Um, this is acknowledging an existing condition, which we do on a regular basis. I'm going to align in with the, uh, the commentary of Mr. Tolowski, and I'll support this uh, motion. Yeah. We, we, we have done that where there's new construction proposed. And where we've done it on, on that, it's just uh, maybe we didn't understand the application as well as we should. I'm very, very concerned on this. I put it on the record that where we change zoning standards, we ask people to come before us to seek uh, compliance with the new standard when you got protection of the Planning Act. It's an application we have no jurisdiction to deal with. That's my view. So, Mr. Chair, I'd just like to clarify that last statement you made. This committee has rendered decisions on applications before with no changes? I, I said they may have. I just don't recall them all. We, we had Mr. Nelson uh, provide one. Uh, I, I can't remember exactly the status of his application, but in my recollection, there, there, we have not had uh, this type of application. Clearly, where staff say the, uh, uh, the existing conditions have a right to remain, minor variance application is not required to recognize that status. I mean, that's clear in my view. That's the protection you need. You have it in the staff report. <coughs> so anyways, uh, let's get the, the vote. Uh, you're saying to approve the application subject to the two conditions that you heard? 
Okay, you got them? All those in support? Oh, the one condition there. All those in support? Those opposed? All right. Uh, Mr. Uh, Charlebois, I guess you better move a motion to refuse the application, and we'll see where that goes. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to put forward a motion to refuse the application based on the various arguments uh, that you would uh, put forward. Uh, okay. Is there uh, a need to discuss that? All those in support? Those opposed? All right, we're going to defer this application. You're going to have plenty of time between now and the next time it gets on the agenda to get this clarified uh, with a legal opinion as to why. I think that's what we're lacking here. And we have uh, another member that's not available. Why we even have jurisdiction. You heard the arguments? I have. Uh, you've also agreed uh, with the position that you got protection. And so help us with why we need to continue dealing with this application one way or another. And we'll render a decision once, once we get a full quorum. And thank, thank you, you for Chairman, your time on that Members one. of the committee. So this application is being deferred. Okay, we'll now deal with the infamous, not yet called, but now to be called application, CAVA 209-2016 at 38 Belvedere Drive. Hi there, my name is Derek Blakely, 38 Belvedere Drive. I'm uh, quite amazed I was already uh, part of the record here. Um, and may have been called up earlier, but uh, I'm looking to do a, um, we have three minor variances. Um, I've been in this house now for uh, 10 years, and uh, you can see here from the picture. So, Mr. Blake, before you, can, you uh, sure. I, I think I know the answer to this. We'll need a presentation only because there's some, some emerging questions that need to be asked. Sure. But I just want to see if there's anyone here other than yourself that has an interest in application CAVA 209-2016 at 38 Belvedere Drive. Okay, this is a, an application that's uh, recommended for approval by staff that the proposed additions be constructed in accordance with the uh, plan submitted October 31st, 26th, and that's submitted. And I'm assuming, members, you have questions, that there better be a presentation. Is that correct? Or do you want to just ask your question? I, I would just like an answer to the question. All right, I, I, we, question. we've done our site visit. Okay. We've, uh, we've read the reports. We understand the application, but we have this conundrum of a question that needs to be asked sure. and uh, I'll let Mr. Talowski ask it again so uh, and give you a chance to respond and we'll give Ms. Wahavlitz a chance to respond as well. Okay. Well I, I believe the question is just for uh, Ms. Wahavlitz as to why in this application are we legalizing the existing portion of the garage through you, Mr. Chairman, to the committee, uh, the uh, variances that are being requested related to the garage are because they are subject to an addition. So in response to these questions with respect to whether or not we're recognizing something that is existing and no changes are being proposed, the garage is actually subject to an enlargement. This garage is looking to seek an enlargement that would uh, continue to utilize the existing garage projection that the one car garage is currently providing. It's adding a second um, door, second to make it a two car garage. And by extending that garage, the side yard setback is also impacted as because that is the full built form. So those two variances are what is in front of you this evening to respect the existing conditions. Just to uh, ask the question, which is probably academic, if there was no changes to the built form and this application was seeking to ask for recognition of the existing built form with no changes, would your position be similar to the previous application? If there were no changes, I would question why a variance okay. was required at all if, there, if that element was not in effect of any kind of okay. addition or change. Mr. Telowski, any follow-up questions? Does that, that, does that assist you? Uh, not really, but um, <laughs> I don't want to hold up this application as I don't see an issue here. Okay. So... <laughs> Am I out of line to, to see if you want to move a recommendation on this, or should we uh, ask someone else to do so? No, Mr. Chair. Um, again, I'd be happy to move a recommendation that uh, this application be approved as applied for. Again, finding it being dealt with in a very consistent manner and meeting the four tests of the Planning Act. Uh, having no um, public opposition to this application 
and I'd uh, move its approval subject to development proceeding in accordance, general accordance with the drawings provided, and that a permit issue within two years. Thank you. Any discussion on recommendation? See none. All those in support? And no one opposed your application being approved, sir. Thank you. All right, we'll move forward to application CAVA 2011 at uh, uh, 2016 at 18 Howard Avenue. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Joris Kieran, Kieran Design, 100 Bronte Road, Unit 10 in Oakville. Thank you, sir. Just before you proceed, is there anyone here this evening that has an interest in application CVA 2011-2016 uh, at 18 Howard Avenue? You're here in opposition? Okay. Sir, can you proceed with the presentation? Sure. We, we were hired by the owners of this property to design uh, a renovation slash addition to the existing dwelling. The main objective was to add a little bit of square footage and also modernize the rear of the building, modernize the interior, and also um, add lots of windows that the, the current rear elevation is lacking and therefore restricting, uh, you know, light from entering the, the house. I don't know who's doing that. There we go. So we uh, embarked on a design process to accomplish those things. The house is remaining the same primarily from a footprint stand standpoint. This is a, a current survey and we're not really adding any expansion of the uh, footprint. Uh, the only thing we are expanding some, uh, some of the main floor uh, footprint uh, over here which is basically a breakfast nook but that is occurring within an existing covered porch so that's why it's not considered an expansion of the footprint. The the other uh, square footage that's being added probably two-thirds of the square footage being added is on the second floor and primarily primarily to the rear of the building which I'll show you in a second but the important thing to note is that there's no expansion to the footprint. This is the uh, existing front of the dwelling, which we are, uh, we like and, and we advise that it just stay completely intact. So there's actually no changes to the front of the house. Most of the changes are occurring uh, at the rear of the house. And I'm not sure if your site visit included a, uh, a venture into the backyard, but just to give you a point of reference, this is a photo of the, of the back of the house. And that's where most of the changes are gonna be occurring. So that's the existing, and then this is our proposed which is um, you know, more of a modernization and adding large windows and uh, a little bit of uh, uh, additional massing uh, on the second floor. The, that's about the extent of the, um, the design changes. I, I realize uh, I was circulated on some comments from the neighbors um, who are concerned about uh, these trees that are on their property but are quite close to um, the property line and are large enough that their root zone, you know, extends into the, the subject property. So I'll just speak to that uh, now. The I was looking down, my apologies. Can you show me the strand of trees that are, you're going to speak I've to? highlighted them here uh, in yellow. And they are entirely on a neighbor's property? As far as we can tell, yeah. Okay. Um, so the, the area I've highlighted in, in pink or I guess it's pink. That's would, the area that you're not touching, you said. Yeah, well, that, that's the area that would be considered the, you know, the root zone, roughly speaking. And the, what I wanted to clarify is that the, the, the neighbors may have been shown drawings previously by the, uh, the client, by my, my client, that, that had this, this covered porch actually uh, being renovated with a, a room underneath. So there was a storage room proposed under this porch, which would have required extensive excavation. 
Um, but because the, uh, the, the people at uh, 12 Howard expressed a concern about saving these trees, that plan was changed um, and that, that room was removed. So in essence, this porch is remaining as is and there's in fact no excavation occurring uh, in this area at all. Um, so so is, that, is that your basement plan, M1? Am I reading this right? Yeah, that's correct. Is this, is this house in reverse? Oh, the, this, the way you should look at it is like this. This ah, is the, okay, the uh, you know. orientation, and then this is the orientation of the basement plan. So you plant. do show storage in the, in the M1? Yeah, we do, but th the storage that was proposed was actually All right, okay. here, okay? And, and these trees are, are kind of located okay. over here. There you go, now we're in so, so this is an existing foundation wall, right. and this storage area, although it's currently not excavated, it's going to be underpinned from the inside and it's gonna be hand dug and there will be no excavation on the outside and it will not impact those, those roots. So the only excavation is for the pillars? Well, the pillars are already there. So there's, it's a note, you're not touching that area then? Correct. Okay, gotcha, thank you. Okay. So that, that was um, just a clarification on, on the work that's being proposed. Um, Turn that the other way to keep us orientated the same okay. way. Thank you. So the, the other, when I was thinking about this and uh, thinking about the presentation, I also thought it was uh, important to note that those trees are probably 50 or 60 years old or, or maybe even older. And, and this house that's there now uh, was built in 2008. So at that time, there would have been, been extensive excavation all around that area. And those roots probably would have been completely decimated. Um, and, and the amount of regrowth that it would occur between now and then is probably minimal. So the, the roots that are there in that current location are probably minimal because of that excavation that occurred um, in 2008 for the, for the actual dwelling. And then just to uh, echo comments from the planning staff uh, that you know, through the, the process of a, of a standard building permit, we will also be going through a tree permit process, which will include an arbor support, et cetera. So there'll be further uh, protections through that process. Right, and, and you can't injure trees on other people's property. Um, you, you're allowed to develop, my understanding is you're allowed to develop with protections in place. No, these are trees that are governed under the Forestry Act. You know, they're boundary trees, not even boundary trees. They're trees on someone else's yeah. property and you need yeah. permission if you're injured. But you're saying there's no injury because... You're not doing any work. There's no exca excavation proposed. And, and your arborist report as part of the permit process will confirm all we'll that. We'll elaborate. We don't have one yet, but that will be discussed. And there was also a, a point about, while well, the addition on the second floor may impact the branches. And th there is there is a addition to the second floor, but as you can see from, from this photo, this is where that addition would occur. And there's not really too many branches that are, you know, coming right into that area. So we don't really think there's going to be even a need for trimming of branches. If so, it would be minimal. Okay. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Kern. Just have a seat nearby and you have the floor, sir, ma'am. Good evening. Name Good and evening. address for the record. Uh, yep, my name is Mark Eichhorn. I'm owner and resident of 12 Howard Avenue. And I'm Claudia Eichhorn. I'm owner and resident of 12 Howard well, You guys need to speak up a bit because uh, we're getting old and plus our hearing. <laughs> so, so you're at 12 Howard Avenue? That's correct. And we have your letter already as part of our package, so we've read it. Mm -hmm. And then, so please go ahead. Sure. Um, well, the root cause of our concern with the minor variance request on residential floor area is in the preservation of three mature spruce trees that are directly impacted by the added structure and foundation additions. Just wanted to show a picture of the... the Sir, just a, as a preamble to your... Uh, presentation then thank you um, so you're referring to our current set of plans right where there's exactly. no excavation in the basement right yep. yeah uh, okay. we were not aware of what he we were never 
You've never seen any other plans? No. You're just only, no. only aware? Okay. Well, uh, our concern is with these uh, addition to the second floor okay, because we thank understand you. that at the moment they have a Muskoka room, which is a light, uh, I guess, a light structure. structure. And with the second addition, they require foundation, and we were actually told by the neighbors that those trees, I guess it's different what, from what he said, that they would require some branch removals and also digging. So I'm not sure. There's a little bit of... I guess, um, uh, like uncertainty, there. uncertainty but we'll, we'll because, talk about why yeah, we but, feel oh. that there's uncertainty. Yeah, you're going to have to speak up so we can oh, hear okay. you. Oh, okay. My bad. Okay. So um, I guess the points to be made that the three um, spruce trees in question are uh, the ones shown here. And um, they are, they're attractive feature to the neighborhood. Uh, they add curb appeal to the house and they're part of the treescape. So we're very interested in their preservation. The spruce trees are around 20 to 25 meters in height, are approximately 24 inches in diameter. And um, sort of the available age to diameter factor suggests the trees could be between 60 to 120 years old. The lot line is more or less on the tree line, which is why these trees are actually fenced into 18 Howard. Given the diameter, at breast height for these three trees are each around two feet and the implied tree protection zone is 3.6 meters. This puts what we are told are likely foundation work within the tree protection zone of all three massive trees. The trunk of one of the trees is within four feet of a likely foundation addition. I'll explain why I, I call that likely. We were presented documentation from our neighbors concluding the mature trees are too close to the foundations and that removal of the trees may eventually be necessary in the longer run. Um, we were also told that some major limbs impacting the new structure would need to be removed or tree sap falling on the roof, the new roof structure would, inter would result in their eventual removal, which would be in a lopsided way adding further stress to these trees. Therefore, we don't currently agree with the planning analysis that the proposed addition will not present any negative impacts to the abutting properties. We believe this foundation addition is indicated on drawing M7. Yeah, I, I have to confess, I have a hard time following your points in your letter there. Okay. The M7 versus the M6 foundation, so I'm glad you're gonna uh, do sure. that. And so, that's this, it's, it's very faint, but there's two addition of foundations on this M7 drawing, and this is the side facing our house. Now, we're just looking at it from a side view, but when we actually look to find those foundations in the actual rear view, they're not to be found. So, at the time it was explained to us, one of the foundations would have gone below the pillar to support the additional secondary structure, second story structure, and possibly one uh, put underneath more directly um, the, the rest of the second story structure. Yeah, we're gonna ask Mr. Curran to clarify that, so. Okay, thank you. Um, so we feel that the uh, variance application is unclear in this regard and needs further definition. A different foundation design may be more appropriate to minimize damage to the trees. Uh, the modern house plans up to now have respected these legacy trees. 12 Howard is indented to accommodate their space and 18 Howard has a low roof profile and light structure to accommodate their space. The variance request is proposing a structure and resulting foundation, likely foundation, that will now directly impact these trees in a negative way. So our summary question to the committee or planning representative um, tonight is a two-part. Um, the first question is what protection is afforded the trees during the design phase of this project? And the second question is what protection is afforded during the construction phase? So I think you heard some of those comments. There's a uh, uh, engineering permit that's required. And during that permit review process, these questions get answered. Uh, we deal with the four tests under the Planning Act. If it's minor, 
both in terms of uh, uh, zoning bylaw, is it uh, desirable, appropriate, does it meet the general intent and purpose of the official plan and zoning bylaw? So those are the things we look at. But there's no doubt uh, constructing a home involves more than just this committee. It involves uh, proper site grading, tree protection, and all that. We don't have all the answers. We can only answer the four tests before us. So there is another process, and uh, you know you should avail yourself and inform yourself of it. Uh, but we, you know, we made uh, notes uh, notes of your concerns, and I'm sure those that are going to review uh, the application will be made aware of your concerns on trees. So, uh, is there any questions? Yes. Just to clarify, if because I, I thought I heard Mr. Curran say that there wasn't going to be any foundation work, but I'll get him to address that. If there was no foundation work here at all, would you have an objection to to these variances? Our concern is only with the trees, yes. So, so if the there's no digging at all and the major root uh, branches on the tree are not going to be removed because of the addition, uh, yeah, we don't have any okay. concerns. I, I would like to clarify the hand digging aspects uh, just to understand what that's about, but um, it was mentioned good, as a first good time. Good question. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask them too. So okay. just, just, to, just to confirm, the variance off for the side yard is on the other side of the tree, is not the same side. Right. Right. So, so, uh, so the house can be built there, as we say, on an as a right basis. They're seeking a variance from the opposite side. So they're not, they're not encroaching any further than the zoning bylaw allows them. But there is that relationship between trees for sure. It doesn't uh, yeah. mitigate that. It's with the floor addition space, not the grandfathered right. uh, version. Okay, thank you for your comments. Anyone else wishing to speak to the committee on application CAVA 121? 2016 at 18 Howard Avenue. Okay, Mr. Kern, can you explain the discrepancy in diagram M7? Sure. As a start. You do show some outline there of some works. Yes. Um, normally we don't show too much foundation detail. You see there's no foundation detail on any of the drawings. This is a remnant uh, line that really didn't need to be there, but I can easily clarify yes. what it is. Um, this is basically just outlining a window well that is occurring um, pretty much in the middle of the house. Uh, and that is also where the breakfast bump out is occurring that I mentioned earlier. And that is where some excavation will be required but that is approximately eight meters away from the side property line and therefore will not impact uh, the, the root area of these trees that we're talking about here. Um, just to reference the, the site plan to give you some, some bearing on what some additional bearing. Yeah, where would that window well be? Yeah, so that is basically right here. That's where the window well is, and that's the line you're seeing Okay. is, is this projection of this window. It's not even shown on the site plan because it's not really, it doesn't have a full foundation. Um, so that's what that line is, and, and that may have caused some confusion because it may have been interpreted as being excavated area over here, but it's not. And uh, I do apologize. Uh, I, I, I thought that the... Um, uh, the residents uh, of the house next door had been provided with these updated plans. Um, but uh, just to reiterate, the plans were amended to address their concern uh, after my client met with them. Um, and at that time, they were proposing a room under that porch and it would have required excavation and it probably would have uh, impacted those trees. Uh, but after hearing their concern, and after actually I got the topographical survey and I saw the size of those trees and it was confirmed, uh, I made the same recommendation to them. And basically, as a result of that, the plans were changed. And therefore, even though there is a porch showing here, we are basically working with the existing porch. Um, there will be uh, possibly a new deck put on the porch, but no excavation uh, required because we're using the existing piers here. The Muskoka room is located right in this corner of the building, and some Muskoka rooms are built on pier foundations, like a deck. Um, this is not the case. There is a full foundation below this Muskoka room. Uh, we don't know how deep it goes, but it would go at least five feet deep, and based on the, the architectural drawings that, are, um, that we have of the existing dwelling, 
uh, they may go even deeper. We're anticipating having to probably dig another two feet down to underpin it to make it a full basement, but that digging work will occur from the inside of the house and basically will not disturb the exterior soil. And if you're digging at, say, a six-foot depth, there are no roots down there anyway. So that's where we're saying, yes, there will be some digging from the inside, um, and it'll be at a depth that uh, the roots will not be uh, affected. So just, just for my own ed edification, what's a Muskoka room? And is the window well shown on, on the basement plan M1? Yeah, let me just go to the basement plan. Uh, okay, so I'll zoom in a little bit. This is, the win this is the window well here. Okay, so that's the uh, M7 coincide yes, with the Yes, with the dashed line. And as you can see, you know, the, the, the property lines being here, the trees are here. This is where the eight meter distance is. Okay. There will be some excavation required for this bump out. But again, it's eight meters away, well within the, um, you know, outside the tree protection zone. What's a Muskoka room? So currently the house has a Muskoka room located right here above on the main floor. What's a Muskoka room? A Muskoka room is basically uh, an enclosed deck ah, okay. uh, with That's a scre screened in porch. So sometimes they are built with pier foundations and they're built more like decks. So if that were the case here, then yes, we would have to dig that up and then go ahead and put a new foundation in here. And then that, yes, that would require digging. And then yes, that would impact the trees. But because this particular uh, Muskoka room already has a full foundation, um, that digging will not be required from the outside. If there is any digging required, uh, it will be done from through an underpinning process through the interior. Okay. Any questions of Mr. Kern? Seeing none. Okay, thank you. We'll take this matter to committee. Who would like to move a recommendation on this? No, we're not. We got to. We got to eventually stop. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to encourage you to speak to Mr. Uh, Kern. He's got answers for you. I just have to make the contact. We're going to take this matter into committee now. Thank you. Who would like to move a recommendation? Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, having reviewed the materials um, and uh, undertaken my site visit and heard the submissions by the adjacent property owner and the, um, the reply from uh, Mr. Kieran, um, I am satisfied that the requested variance is uh, conformed to the test of the Act, and I'll put forward a motion of approval subject to uh, two conditions, uh, the first being that the proposed additions be constructed in general accordance with the drawings dated November 28th, 2016, and the other being um, that the approval expire within two years if a permit has not been issued. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Discussion on that recommendation? Seeing on all those in support? No one opposed your application being approved. I Thank encourage you, you please, to, uh, to uh, reach out to Mr. Curran. Mr. Curran, you as well to uh, the residents that were here and exchange cards, information, and continue to remain in touch during any construction process that may occur. Thank you. Now we'll deal with application CAVA 066-2016. This is a matter that was deferred from our April 5th, 2016 agenda at 204 Mary Street. Can I have a show of hands of who was here? Sir, let's just get your name and address. Uh, right. Warren Greenidge, uh, 19 Egan Avenue, Toronto, Ontario. Uh, say again, sir? Uh, 19 Egan Avenue, Toronto, Ontario. And your name? Warren Greenidge. Okay, we're dealing with application uh, uh, CAV 066-2016, deferred from April 5th, 2016 at 204 Mary Street. Okay, anyone here this evening have an interest in application? Okay. I'm assuming you need a presentation. Sir, can you proceed? Sure. Uh, we'll so we, we're asking for three minor variances. Um, the idea behind this house is to build an accessible home so my parents can live in place. Uh, and to do that, we need a uh, certain size. Um, we've been working with staff over the last six months from our initial proposal to get to this point. Uh, we have three letters of support. And uh, between when we first applied and uh, today, we did spend some time canvassing the neighborhood, informing our neighbors of any of the future plans. Um, so we're looking for uh, a minor variance here and a minor variance here. Um, 
and I guess should I should I address the concerns of my neighbors or should I let well them? you have a right to well you can be okay. preemptive and address them but you also have a right to come back so okay it's up um, to you. so uh, we've worked with staff as much as possible we have a, a very awkward lot it's a corner lot um, and there's a lot of distances that we have to meet to build on this lot and and we've tried our best uh, to not impose it on our neighbors and also um, meet, the, meet our requirements. Um, once again, we've worked with staff for a very long time to do that, um, and this is our, 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 our best proposal uh, with the support of staff. Um, one of the concerns of our neighbors was that we have, we're building, a, a, as they described, a Toronto house with uh, uh, too close of a distance between our neighbors, but in fact, we've actually doubled the distance uh, from our current house to what the new house would be proposed. And at the front of the house, we'd actually meet the, the standards. Uh, and uh, besides that, I think they were also concerned about the size of the in initial front lot here. Um, but given that our property ends here, but the actual physical property ends way up here, uh, I don't think that would be much of concern. That's, that's pretty much it. So can you, can you explain to us what happened in between the deferral and now? Uh, we reduced the size, so this was an, our initial proposal here, this line up here, uh, and we actually shrunk the size, but we elongated it. Um, yeah, yeah, we, we tried so our So how best. many variances did you have at the last round? Um, I believe three or four. You, th you have three now? Yeah. So you, as a result of deferral, you eliminated some variances? We've elim oh, I believe we eliminated And reduced some, others? And reduced others, yeah. Okay, any questions? Okay, just don't go too far away. We're, we have a show of hands here and take some notes and we'll call you back. Who would like to approach the committee first? Thank you. To the committee, I'm not an expert. I just looked at these diagrams quickly and I'm one, I'm one of the persons that handed an objection at the 1.8 meter. My name's Roseanne Dallapena on that. Uh, Oh, Roseanne Dallapena, 279 Maurice Drive. And just when the gentleman said there are minor variances to him and he's not imposing on the neighborhood, what I remember from the diagram, the back of the house was like 1.5 meters to the neighbor's property line. I'm not an expert in these things, but I just want to make um, the strength of Oakville is that we have um, a lot of green space and we, I, just what I find is happening is there's a lot of big houses on small properties, and I don't want in our neighborhood to, that this house, it's kind of, it's big, and it, we're reducing the green space, like 1.8 meters from the front of the house to the property line. When the town of Oakville bylaw says 3.5, uh, I work in Toronto, and variance has gone askew, um, uh, askew, and my sister lives in Richmond Hill. She bought a, a house in a neighborhood that looked like Oakville, and that's been all destroyed, and I just don't want this to be the beginning of we're trying to put a house on a property that's too big. And I, Thank you. You had an opportunity to read staff's report, assessment on this? I took a look at the diagrams. It was quick. No, no, not the diagram. There was a, a, a oh. staff report. And where do I get a hold of that? It, it's online. Okay. And I'm sure you can get a copy because I think some of the concerns you expressed have been covered by the analysis by planning staff. Okay, I'll read it. Okay. Thank you. It's a beautiful house to the owners. The design is beautiful. Um, I just smaller maybe. Thank you, Ms. Delapena. Uh, I'm assuming members, you have any questions? Anyone else wishing to speak? Sir, come on down. Hello, uh, Dan Murray. Uh, I live at 208 Mary Street, so the uh, neighbor uh, to the west. Um, and uh, so we, uh, we showed up to the meeting where um, it was deferred in April. And uh, we, didn't, we, had, we had seen the rendering at that point, but we had never seen the plan until we received our letter in the mail, uh, I guess, last week about this meeting. So I had a chance to look at uh, the plan at that point and uh, the variance that uh, concerned us was the, the variance from 3.5 to 
uh, I'm not. 1.18. To 1.18 to uh, the property line. Flankage. Yeah, flankage on the west side, west property boundary. Is that correct? Uh, no, it's on the other side. So the flankage would be to the uh, street side. Uh, the, the so you're, you have Ms. Mihalovic uh, putting up so the plans? The, the variance that we're concerned with is, in fact, this one. So there is no variance oh. on, on your side. In fact, the existing house sits like this, and they're improving the setback by pushing it even further back. All right, so there's no bylaw that... No, that the, the, what you just heard is the existing built form is closer to you than the proposed built form, and it meets the bylaw requirements. So, so the flankage variance is for the other side on Mary Street. Oh, I see. This is a one point eight. Listen, we even get confused as well, so thank you for providing a clarification because, you know, these are good questions. Not mm -hmm. everyone understands flankage and side yards and all that, so it's important to seek the answers that you need. Okay. Um, I guess the other thing, um, in speaking with uh, our neighbor, uh, he mentioned that there was a, uh, I mean, the reason why we were concerned about this distance, um, which you've mentioned is increasing, however, the structure is getting quite a bit larger. So currently they look nearly identical um, in size. So they're adding a story and they're um, expanding the overall structure uh, considerably. So yes, uh, our neighbor mentioned that there was a light study uh, that was done um, that was considered by, uh, by the planning department on how uh, increasing the size of that building would affect the light in the backyard. Light? Um, like, what do you mean by light? Sunlight? Or yeah, rain? sunlight. Rain? Sunlight? Yeah. You mean shadow impacts? Yes. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but we'll ask Ms. Mahavlich to provide any information she has. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through to the committee, to the residents. Through minor variance applications, we don't require a sun shadow study or an assessment of shadow that would be generated through the proposal. Um, the zoning bylaw stipulates what the required minimum rear yard would be side yard setbacks, front yard setbacks, et cetera, to help regulate the building. In this instance, the rear yard setback uh, is actually greater than what the bylaw would provide. And then the side yard, the westerly side yard abutting uh, the resident's property uh, is actually also greater to allow for additional separation distance. Um, it would be staff's expectation that by providing those additional separation distance, light would naturally find those areas to reduce any shadow impact. But no study has been submitted or reviewed by the staff. Does that help, sir? Uh, yeah, that helps, I guess. Any other questions? Uh, anyone else wishing to make a submission? Yes, Mr. Uh, Charlebois. I just thought I'd... Just, just to add to your point, which mm. wasn't really dealt with in here, but as of a right, the, the applicant actually can make the house even bigger. In other mm -hmm. words, cover more of the lot than he's permitted to do. He's permitted to cover 35%. He's only covering 33.9. So, in fact, that he could have sprawled the building out a little bit more, mm -hmm. which would have, to your point, maybe have created more of a problem. In fact, he's, he's actually not doing that. He's staying well within his his uh, his envelope. All that he's really doing is is shifting it a little closer to Maurice Street and a little further away from you, but basically staying within his his envelope. Okay. Yep. Anyone else wishing to speak to the committee? Mr. Greenidge? What's your address again? I we uh, did nineteen Egan Avenue. Egan? Yeah. E G A N. E G A N. Anything else you wish to add to the application, sir? Um, so none of the trees on the property will be affected. Um, there's about three to four new builds in the area. and No, the, you, you, you have to respond to any concerns you heard, not new evidence. Oh, uh, so That's what I think the uh, initial concern was uh, me changing the neighborhood. Okay. Uh, I'm showing that I'm consistent okay. with what's going on the in the neighborhood. Uh, effect was the first question, I think, was about trees. None of the trees will be impacted. Um, and then I think that's that's pretty much all the Any questions, questions of Mr. Uh, Greenidge? Seeing none, okay, we'll take this back into committee. Who would like to move a recommendation? Mr. Uh, Charlebois? Yeah, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, having, um, uh, yeah, having reviewed the material, done my site visit, and, uh, you know, read the staff report as well as listened to the... Uh, 
the comments from uh, from the public. I, I feel that uh, at this particular meeting, the the concerns of the public have been addressed. And uh, in looking at this particular application, I find it does meet the four tests under the Planning Act, and I recommend that uh, that it be approved. Subject to the condition that the proposed dwelling be constructed in accordance with the plans dated November 30th, 2016, is submitted and subject further to the condition that this approval will expire uh, within two years from this date of this decision if the proposed development does not proceed or a building permit is not issued. Okay, thank you. Discussion on recommendation? Seeing none. All those in support? No one opposed. Your application has been approved. All right, we'll deal with our last application for this year, and it's CAVA 189-2016. It was deferred from November 29, and it's for 387 Watson Avenue. The owner agent, please come forward. Is there anyone here this evening other than the agent that's coming forward, sir? Your name and address for the record? Yes, Mr. Chair. My name is Bill Outrud. Uh, my address is RR2 Hillsburg, Ontario. Okay, thank you. Um, is there anyone uh, here other than Mr. Outridge that has an interest in application CAVA 189-2016? Yes? Okay. Uh, are you here in support or? Yeah, you support. Well, why don't you make it easy for everyone. Come down, register your uh, name. I, and then we can, uh, you know, we, we have to do this because of the new requirements of the Planning Act, particularly because they need to know. I'm Krista Cumming. I'm one of the applicants. You're Krista Cumming. Oh, yeah. Well, you better be here for support. Yeah. She's your she's your client. <laughs> she's my client, but I never All right. Met, well, yes. yeah. All right. Well, Thank you. there we go. Uh, <laughs> anyone else other than the applicant uh, is here this evening? Okay, seeing none. So just explain to us the uh, what happened in intervening deferral because I, I, I can't recollect right now why it was deferred. And then uh, we'll take this matter into committee. Okay. Yeah, I'll just briefly explain. Um, Back three weeks ago, uh, there was uh, identification that the large red oak that is uh, right here on the property uh, could potentially be preserved uh, by uh, redesigning the house to basically, uh, you know, try and uh, keep it, uh, as our arborist said, about four or five meters from the base of the tree. I've outlined on this plan in yellow basically the existing uh, house that is uh, essentially long and, and rambling. And black is the new home, and this is the uh, the red oak. Uh, since three weeks ago, what we've done is we've shifted the house around so that we are keeping a large beech tree that is right where I'm pointing, where it's right beside the existing garage. Uh, it's a pretty well the exact same proximity uh, as the uh, the new house uh, after we've shifted it. So we're keeping this beech tree. We're also keeping this beech tree. And furthermore, on the owner's um, recommendation, we've done a full aerial review of the red oak. Uh, he has determined from uh, day one that, uh, or has suggested from day one, that the red oak was in decline. Um, certainly by looking at the oak, it looked like it was in good shape. Uh, we undertook a uh, aerial review on Monday this week with the arborist. And indeed, it's uh, interesting that the tree, the base of the tree does look like it is in good shape. The tree from the base, ground level, up to the uh, area where the trees or the branches branch off, uh, the tree is essentially completely hollow, uh, the entire 20 foot distance from base to the upper part. So uh, certainly there is a, a hazard um, uh, association with the tree. So, um, you know, there's really no, no need or no, no opportunity to, uh, to keep the tree. Um, you know, deal, dealing with the application as it is, we are just taking down the red oak. Uh, we'll be applying for a, a tree permit to remove the red oak. Um, just dealing with the actual variance of why we're here beyond the trees, uh, we are looking for, for coverage, 26.94% as opposed to uh, the required 19%. And as the committee is aware, we did provide a planning justification, uh, looked at the, uh, the whole area within uh, uh, two blocks. Um, there is a multitude of uh, coverage variances, uh, anywhere from 20% to uh, 32%, I believe. Uh, once again, we're looking at 26.94, which includes the, uh, the covered porches. So it is within, certainly within uh, reasonable bounds uh, of the, uh, the massing and, and the coverage of other homes within the area. Yes, we have no, no issue. Yes. Who would like to move a recommendation? Mr. Hardcastle? Absolutely, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
having reviewed the materials, um, heard, heard the uh, presentation from Mr. Otred, I'm satisfied that the uh, requested variance conforms to the tests of the Planning Act, and I'll put forward a motion of approval. Subject to um, um, four conditions. Um, first being that the proposed dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the plans. The second being that a construction management plan be submitted to the satisfaction of the Director of Development Engineering. The third being that a uh, tree preservation plan and landscape plan be submitted to the satisfaction of the Director of Development Engineering. And the fourth being that the um, um, variants uh, expire within two years if a permit's not been issued. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, discussion on recommendation? Seeing none, all those in support? No one opposed that application being approved, sir. Okay, great, thank you. Happy holidays okay. to you all. Uh, Merry Christmas to you too, sir. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All those in support? Adjourn. Okay, thank you.